Hi, so I want to talk about this problem, which it, I'm going to call RELP, uh, but it consists of all pairs of integers, and I want to figure out whether those two integers are relatively prime. And relatively prime means that there are no uh, common prime factors, such as 2 and 7. We could have, uh, uh, let's see, 3 and uh, 8. Those are relatively prime to each other. And I claim that this language is in P. So that means that if we're given two uh, integers, I can figure out whether they are relatively prime and do it in a uh, polynomial amount of time. So the basic idea here is to note that uh, relatively prime, relatively prime is the same thing as asking if the greatest common divisor of x and y is equal to one. Because if it's larger, then that means that there is a divisor, uh, a non-trivial divisor of the two. And you can show that that's not, they're not relatively prime if it's not equal to one. So the way to go about this is to use uh, Euclid's uh, GCD algorithm. So Euclid's GCD algorithm. And how does that go? So what you do is you, you basically trade places between the X and Y trying to reduce one in terms of the other one and then swap them until either you hit zero or you hit something that you stop at some point and then you hit something that's not zero, which means that they are not relatively prime. So uh, here's what you do. So we're going to do the following. So we're going to repeat uh, until y is zero. So then we're going to say, we're going to save uh, x to be x mod y. And then we're going to trade places between x and y. So, and, and then at the very end, we're going to output x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to find what is x modulo y. So x is going to be some number between 0 and y minus 1. And then we'll swap the two, the roles of the two. And then when we go around again, if this is not true, then it's effectively going to, we're going to replace y with y mod x. And so y is going to be reduced. So each one of these is going to reduce and reduce and reduce until uh, we get to uh, y is zero. So we're going to hit zero at some point and then we output x right there. So then if this guy right here, uh, so if this is not equal to one, then not relatively prime. And if x equals one, then they are relatively prime because it's, re it's outputting the GCD value. And I'm not going to prove that this is actually correct, but I want to analyze how many steps that it takes. So uh, I need to show that this is uh, big O of n to the C runtime for some C. Okay. But the really important thing is, and this is extremely important to always keep in mind, what is this value of n? So the, the C can be just some number, like three or whatever. But the N here, what is that? Typically, we just associate that with how big the input is. And here is no exception. But, per, but generally, when we are working with numbers, we work with the binary representation of the number. So the size of X, actually, I shouldn't write that with a number, but uh, size of X is going to be roughly log, uh, or I should even say, uh, let's say big O of log X in size, the number of bits required to present X to the computer. It's, so I can't just say like X to the C if like that happens to be the runtime because the number X is exponential in the size of X. So we're always working in our runtimes with the size of the input, not the valuation of the input here. Um, because one, it's standard, and two, why would we treat numbers any different than like an array or something? So we always treat it with the size here. You could uh, 
in principle, talk about the unary representation of the number, which is linear in the size. The number itself is linear in the size of the input, but we generally don't work with that. So sometimes we talk about like, this problem is hard when we have binary numbers, but is easy for unary numbers. And we may hit that at some point, but here is log X, let's just assume. So one thing to note here is that the, each time we do the modulo here, the number X will uh, decrease by at least half every single time. So, so at each iteration, uh, X or Y, whichever the one is the case, uh, decreases uh, by uh, at least half of, it, of its value each time. In fact, it could go a lot more if uh, X happened to have uh, something that's really close to a multiple of Y here. So it, it could go way lower, but at worst, it can go down by a half. Um, and that's actually all that we need. So the number of iterations to hit down to uh, zero is going to be uh, it's going to be this. So the number of iterations then is going to be uh, one over two. Uh, let's say is k. Let's just call it k, and then that k will be. Actually, I should say this. So it'll be, uh, yeah. So it's going to go by down by half at least every single time to the power of k. That's going to be the number of times that it actually has to go down. And for that reason, you can actually reason now that the number of iterations is going to be logarithmic in the in the actual number of uh, the number x here. So if we have x, then the number of iterations to go all the way down to to uh, y equals zero is going to be logarithmic in that because we're dividing by at least two every single time. And so therefore, what you can have here is that k is going to be uh, logarithmic in x. And actually, it's going to be logarithmic in the maximum of x of, let's say, I'm not writing this right, log x and log y. Because I don't know necessarily which one is bigger, but uh, one of them is going to uh, hit zero. So y is going to eventually hit zero. So you could write this so that... Um, that x is the bigger number so that y hits zero first but one of the two is going to hit zero so maybe i should um change this algorithm i should say until until either x or y hits zero and then output um this the smaller this yeah output the non-zero number I don't have any space for this. So I'll put the non-zero number. And if it happens to be x, we have this reasoning here. So we have that the number of iterations is going to be logarithmic in one of the two numbers. And so for that reason, it's essentially linear in the size of the, of the two numbers here. And so therefore, this... Uh, runtime certainly is a polynomial. It's linear, in fact, which is great. And so therefore, we can show with that reasoning that rel p is a member of p, even though uh, it's actually still unknown whether we can actually output the prime factors of a number in polynomial time. Uh, we can certainly figure out if two numbers are relatively prime. And a recent paper, by recent I mean like early 2000s, you can actually figure out whether a single number is prime. And uh, so that's a recent development. But in this one was a really just an analysis of Euclid's GCD algorithm.
which is actually quite cool. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about relatively prime integers in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.